What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Neo stock in the overall market. I'm going to talk about some very important things that Jerome Powell said during the FOMC meeting, what the news is saying about Neo and how the technicals are looking for today as Neo finally got another green day. But before I break anything down, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit any amount of money to the account, you are guaranteed up to six free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks, plus uh, you'll get six months of level two data. And putting in $25,000 or more guarantees you 70 free stocks, plus 12 months of level two data. I saw friends in just five days, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the market. So when it comes to NEO, NEO is up about 2.2%, holding up very nicely, testing the 50 EMA. And if we end up breaking this, we have 7.76 as our next level. So overall, it's still trying to hold up. But the question is, how will the market end up affecting this? I think it's going to depend a lot on how tomorrow goes. Now the market tries to hold up. So what happened for today? The Fed announced that they're going to be holding the interest rates the same. Nothing has changed when it comes to their uh, uh, the current rate but their targets have actually shifted for 2024 as they're starting to hint at three potential cuts for 2024. And Powell is now talking more about the cuts than before as a possibility. He did mention that future rate hikes are a possibility, but the Fed so far does not have a sign of doing that. And the data so far is suggesting that's not going to likely be the case because PPI also came out in the morning. Today, PPI came out below expectations. This tends to be a leading indicator for CPI, suggesting that CPI is going to be either as expected or even below expectations uh, going into the next report. So that's once again a very, very good sign. PPI is looking quite decent. Now the question is, what is going to happen with the market? So with the Fed, uh, now the market is shifting its view. For January, the market's expecting the Fed to keep rates the same. But for March of 2024, uh, the market expects a 68% chance of the Fed cutting. We might get our first rate cut very, very soon. And the market's very excited about that. Now, typically, when the Fed cuts rates, this oftentimes starts happening as things start breaking. So could it mean that the Fed is you know, like seeing a recession coming? Could that be what's about to happen? Maybe, maybe not. But at the same time, I just want to mention that with the market holding up the way it is, uh, you know, the market is still pumping. And just because the market is pumping, it does not mean the economy is in a strong place. So with that being said, I just want to mention that uh, we'll see what happens moving forward. So far, the market is loving what Jerome Powell has been saying. Powell said that the, the Fed is near their like peak when it comes to the uh, the, the peak of the interest rates and etc. Uh, that we're going to see maybe 75 basis points worth of rate cuts in 2024. And this is some decent news thus far. The Fed is also going to continue to monitor how inflation is looking. And before we see a 2% inflation rate, the Fed has to already start cutting because they don't want to over tighten. That is what Jerome Powell said. He said there is work to be done, but so far there's progress being made. Now, as far as SPY goes, as a reminder, we have about 4.6 million puts expiring for Friday. Um, we have just uh, under 2 million calls expiring. So 2.4 puts to call ratio, and we're still well above that level. On top of that, when it comes to our fear and greed index, the greed right now is still relatively high. We're not ex at extremes yet, but we're still quite greedy. And there's going to be improvement that's being made. As far as NEO goes, uh, NEO is basically mentioning that uh, it's improving. It's going to improve its manufacturing facilities. And on top of this, there's been a lot of talk about different areas in which NEO could cut costs. This is something that Deutsche Bank is talking about. I'm just going to list them real quick. Battery cells are going to be something that NEO could cut costs on, uh, not to mention chip development. They actually brought more information about this. The battery swaps in itself are things that could be worked on, the dealer network and their phone. That is good news for them because we're seeing more talk about them potentially cutting costs, which could help them become a lot more efficient. NEO had 56 million in volume, so good volume was coming in. Not to mention Mizuho is giving NEO a buy rating, and the price price ratio is still kind of flat. Also, historically, Wednesdays tend to be decent days. Thursdays tend to be a little bit weaker, and Fridays tend to be stronger. So hopefully we see NEO try to hold up. Now we're going to be breaking down the charts. So this is pretty insane. The market went crazy when Jerome Powell was speaking. It just continued to pump. NEO is looking like it's about to get a, <coughs> excuse me, a bullish crossover on the PPO. So I think it's going to be revisiting the 7.76 area either tomorrow or Friday. Look for a little like pullback here when we open to 7.3 and a push back up. I think 7.76 is coming either by Thursday or Friday. And I think we're going to see a little push to the upside to get very close to $8. I think SPY looks bullish. 
on the four hour time frame. It is overbought if you want to go that route. So uh, how tomorrow goes depends on some factors, but I think ultimately there's more upside coming. So here's how I see this going. Okay, if we get a consolidation day tomorrow, I anticipate upside for Friday as we have loads of puts expiring and the overall trend is still bullish, especially because we have this bullish crossover on the PPO. If we start breaking out tomorrow, I think that either tomorrow or Friday, we're going to see SPY reach 474. I think there's more upside coming. I don't think that we're done just yet because we have this liquidity zone up here at 474. I think we're going to be visiting this area very soon. And I think that there's more upside coming. I also want to add that the dollar, if you look at the dollar index, this is looking very bearish. You have a bearish engulfing candle. You're going to likely see this thing start sinking all the way back down to these lower levels. 102.5 is likely coming. This is going to help the market push up even more. Now, for Tesla, Tesla loved hearing the news about them potentially cutting interest rates. Tesla is going to likely try to bounce, look for it to try to make its way back up to 242.5 and eventually the mid 240s. It looks bullish. I think by Friday, we're going to make our way back up there. Apple is still holding up, but just be a little careful as we're at some tight resistance. Look for the little back test. I think it could back test 197 and then eventually continue. I think by Friday, we could see Apple reach 200. There's no sign of it being done just yet. By Friday or before Friday, we're going to see 200. Triple Q is going for all-time highs. It's very close, still holding up very, very nicely. And I think that there's definitely more upside potential. So right now, could we back test 402, the 402.5 area? Yeah, could come down just a little bit. We either get a consolidation date and a pump for Friday, or we just pump as soon as tomorrow. And I think that we're going to be making our way back up past 405, then 408 is the next target. NVIDIA, it's holding up nicely, but... Uh, with the weeklies turning a bit more bullish, NVIDIA closed above 480, which is a good sign. The four hour is turning a bit, a bit more bullish. You have these uh, wicks up here, which suggests more upside is probable. And we did end up coming up to this target that I've been talking about for quite some time. I could see NVIDIA making its way up to about 485 again, and we'll see if that breaks uh, either by Friday or even tomorrow. 485 plus is coming, then we're eventually going to push up 487 and 490. Looks bullish overall. And then with that being said, I think I went over the main ones out there. Now let's just break down NEO. In my opinion, NEO looks bullish. I think it's going to try to push up a little bit. We're about to get a bullish crossover on the PPO. On the daily time frame, NEO still is holding up decently. I know NEO is kind of low right now. It may maintain this low value because of the fact that there's an accumulation right here. But as we approach NEO day for 2023, I think there's more upside coming. So watch NEO get close to 7.76 either tomorrow or by Friday. Look for a little rejection and a liquidity grab at 7.3, then a push up for 7.76 to almost $8. So that being said, guys, I see some more upside potential coming for NEO. Thank you all so much for listening. Have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. I'll see you guys in the next one. NEO to the moon because the long term is still incredibly bright. And peace out.